Feel Look B is hugely influential, massively. It's changing lives. It's changing hundreds and hundreds of lives every month. And the people that stay on it are working towards complete health, optimal health. We're not talking about weight loss. This is not a weight loss program. This is a get healthy program. Now, I'm sure many of you have yo-yo dieted all your life. You've maybe been skinny, and I'm talking like in your terms and in your words, skinny and then you go fat, and then skinny and then fat, and then skinny, and not so bad, happy for a while, boom, straight back again. And you call it fat, right? Um, your metabolism does not know where it's at. Imagine you've got weak adrenals. All of this I'm going to cover in more depth um, later on in this program. But you've got weak adrenal glands for a start. Your cortisol levels are too high. Your body's forcing you into fight or flight. You're storing body fat. Hmm, there's one problem. Second problem is you've got fatty liver. Nobody told you you had fatty liver. Look down. Is your belly wobbly? Mm-hmm. Can you see your feet? Nope. You've probably got fatty liver. Fat in and around your liver. Has anybody told you that? No. You go to the doctor. Has the doctor ever said that to you? No. You're on medication though, right? You've got thyroid issues. No wonder you've got a fatty liver. No wonder you've got a thyroid issue. Maybe it's Hashimoto's. Maybe it's Graves. We'll get to that. Uh, then it's menopause. Women got all the good stuff. Menopause. Perimenopausal. You're like a lunatic. Your moods are all over the place. Your hormones are erratic. You don't know if you're coming or going. Menopause. Full-blown menopause. Your estrogen levels, or estrogen as we call it in Dundee, are all over the place. Added to that, you eat crap food. You're on slim fast. What? What? You're doing Weight Watchers. You're on Scottish Slimmers. You're losing muscle fast. You're starting to get what's called atrophy. So this here is muscle. Before menopause, you've got a lot of muscle. You've got the cell membrane right round. You've got the muscle inside that sort of salmony pink colour. You go into menopause after menopause. Atrophy. Where's your boobs gone? They're down there somewhere. But they're definitely there. Your muscles have gone. You've got cellulite. You've got flabby skin. It looks like collagen. You've got no collagen in your body. You think, oh, it's the aging process. Actually, it's not the aging process. It's all of the bad habits you've picked up along the way. And the gov government is responsible for lots of them. I'll tell you why. Because they are leading us to think that we should be eating healthy whole grains are the staple, the base of the food pyramid. That's what you should be eating. Low-fat alternatives. You need to be eating low-fat alternatives to most things. Everything, actually. Don't eat fat. Fat's really, really bad for you. In fact, fat isn't bad for you. Good fat's not bad for you. All the fats that are bad for you are not on our meal plan. So that's atrophy. We will come back to that in time. Um, so tonight is all about cravings and withdrawals and what's actually happening in your body. Now, listen. You might be craving carbohydrates because you've been eating cereals, pastas, rice, um, cakes and biscuits. You have been a sugar burner for many years. Maybe you've gained weight all of a sudden. Maybe, I don't know, you've had a health problem. Maybe you've had a stress event in your life. You've got this weight. Lockdown, that's a stress event. You've got this weight. You, you're not really sure. Well, you are sure. You've just been eating too much. But you think... You've been, your diet's been okay, but you've just been eating too much of it. Well, I'm here to tell you that in most cases, your diet's probably crap. And I'm also here to tell you that your personal trainer is probably advocating that because you're tracking your macros and you're in a calorie deficit. So see this atrophy, oh, we've lost it. See this atrophy thing, that's going to happen when you're in a calorie deficit all that time and you are eating uh, nutrient deficient foods like pastas and rices and cereals and bagels and rice cakes and all of that garbage. That's what's going to happen. Do you not believe me? You don't, do you? Watch this video. I show it every month and the people that have been on Feel Look B for a while. I'm going to do my own version of this this month. 
me and Leo are going to do Shelley Wood version of this video because it's great and it's only about four minutes. Please watch it. If you're new to it, it will open your eyes and it'll give me a context to start t talking to you more, okay? So it's going to frame the whole conversation tonight. Here we go. Please listen. I'll take it in. Politician Alison Barnes wants to show a group of office workers just how much energy in the form of sugar these carbs release into their bloodstream. Okay, so I've lined up the selection of foods. We've got a bagel and a chocolate muffin. Okay, so I would say that that is more sugar course. than this one. Maybe two cubes for that one. We're calling this blood sugar bingo. Can our volunteers guess the equivalent cubes of sugar in each of these foods? What do you think? Yeah, let's five to make let's it. Go, let's go five. Okay. So you've gone for the, the muffin as the slightly higher one. I'm just going to add to that. Oh, oh, whoa. <laughs> Double. Oh wow. my, okay. So 10 sugar cubes in that muffin. This one, so you've gone for two, so it's more starchy, less sugary. Yeah, that's okay. what we're guessing. Yeah, <laughs> so let's just add to this one. Oh, well. Wow, uh, maybe not. That's the same as the muffin. I'm going to add one more. More sugar. So there's 11 sugar cubes <laughs> equivalent okay. in this bagel. I'm shocked, I won't lie, I'm shocked. Yeah. What you're saying is that in the bagel, when you eat it, you chew it up and start to digest it, your body is breaking that starch down into that quantity of sugar. The equivalent of sugar, yeah, yeah, wow. exactly. This is a, a portion of white rice, and then you've got a nice bowl of strawberries. The rice. Yes, let's go for... Five. I would never have put sugar with rice. Strawberries. I would have put half of that bowl. <laughs> <laughs> they are sweet. Two are, yeah. Okay, so in this amount of strawberries, there is... <gasps> four sugar cubes. Ooh, wow. So yeah, so although they taste sweet, actually the amount of carbohydrate that they contain is, is quite small. So let's compare that to this portion of rice then. Oh, no. So you've gone for five, so just let oh, me... No. What are you doing? I'm just going to do this. I'm not eating oh, rice no. again. Oh, word. Oh, my God. Really? It's grains of sugar that we're eating. Yeah, I'm not eating rice so, no more. So and there, so that is, that's 20 sugar cube equivalents. Jack potato. Yeah. Can you not do that? It's my favourite food, potato. <laughs> <laughs> I would go with... Similar to the bagel, yeah? yeah like about 10. You've got quite a good poker face, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> so in fact, there's, there's 19 sugar cubes wow. in this in this jacket potato. It's almost, almost double what you thought. And I'm so sorry, I'm Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, it's yeah. a shock where, where they're hiding all the sugar. I think one of, the, one of the key things to take away from this is that looks can be deceiving. Mm. So just because a food doesn't necessarily taste sweet doesn't mean that there's not going to be sometimes an awful lot of sugar mm. going into your, your system after you've eaten it. The thing that this really rounds home for me is that there is a huge amount of energy in a potato and that pile of glucose there that will, your body will turn the potato into will be stored as fat unless you burn it off. Unless you so burn it off. You have to be careful about what you're putting in your mouth. Right, question is though, are you careful about what you're putting in your mouth? Second thing I want to come on to is actually, is about the programme in general. The Feel Look B formula is an absolute game changer and a life changer. It really is. And it's world class. And I'm not just bigging myself up here. It is. Um, but the one thing that I can pride myself on is the fact that I'm really very real and humour and light-hearted spirit. Light-spirited. No. Hmm. <sighs> Lightness. I like a lightness to a conversation. I can go deep and go heavy when I need to and be really serious when I need to be. But see, in general, you'll often find me just having a bit of banter for you. Science is boring, right? But if I could simplify it for you and break it down in ways you think, I remember that. That was dead funny how she put that. I remember that. Then that's what I would rather do. And actually, 
I'm only getting one shot at this life carry on as well, right? And I want to be hanging with people that make me laugh, people that get me, people that understand me. See, people that don't understand me, don't get me, don't even want to, well, they'll drift away. But for the ones that stick, I'm going to try and make you stick because I like you. And I like to like people. Do you? See, that human element, just talked about that earlier on, it's missing a lot, isn't it? The human element. Watch Simon Sinek last night when he, before he went to sleep. In fact, I fell asleep on Simon, which I'm not sure how he would feel. He'd probably be over the moon with that right now. Um, so, and he was talking about managerial positions and promotions. And, oh, fine, give somebody a massive promotion. Well, they're managing people, but they have no idea how to manage people. They've been doing the job really, really well. And then all of a sudden, they get this opportunity and all of a sudden, they're put into a position where they're managing people. A lot of people can't manage people. A lot of people can't speak to people. The human element, very difficult to get across in a corporate sort of situation. So you get numpties managing people. But they were good at that job that they'd done. Know what I mean? That's why we're in a bloody pickle. We've got numpties running the countries. Running big businesses. So, where were we? Cravings and addictions. What is a craving? A craving is... Uh, it's like a desire. It's a strong desire for something. So you'll decide if you've got a craving or you've got an addiction. Addiction, on the other hand, is an inability to stop, resist or control that temptation. An inability to stop it, control it. So you'll decide what you've got. Sugar is the work of the devil. Sugar is going to keep you stuck. It's going to keep you fixed. You're going to be a sugar burden. So you will not tap into any fat stores you have so long as sugar is in your life. You won't. Even when you go to the gym and you do those mental sessions that last a couple of hours, you're just burning off sugar. What about the belly? No. Nope. You might send yourself into a calorie deficit to get the belly off. But then what are you doing? A wee bit of fat, mostly muscle. It's called, it's called cata, um, catabolic. Anabolic is the other way. It's build. Catabolic is depletion. Breaking down muscle. What happens when you break down muscle to use it as energy? Your metabolism flattens. What do you think? I've tried that programme and I didn't lose weight. Why? Because your metabolism's buggered. You've spent that long yo-yoing, yo-yo dieting all your life. Added to that, glucose is carcinogenic. It feeds cancer. <whistles> what? So why are you eating that shit then that that woman's just told you about? Bagels, rice, breads, pastas, all that stuff. Sending your glucose way high. Look at your skin. Your skin will tell you if it's happy or not or what you're eating. If you've got high, so if you break out in spots or you've got itchy, rashy skin, that's a really quick indication that your skin's not happy with what you're doing to it. Your, your skin's not happy with what you're doing to your body. Then you've got your liver and your organs. Then you've got your belly. And you think, oh shit, I need to find Shelley Booth. But you're here. You're here now and that's all that matters. I'm going to help you. So cravings and addictions, fine. Hypothalamus in the brain, like a wee pea, controls so many things, including glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, salts. It responds to what you've got in your body. Glucose, fatty acids, sugar, whatever you've got. The hypothalamus thinks, right, okay, it's like a wee computer. And then it decides what it's going to do. On top of that, you're seeing. So say you're sharing a house. Say, say you come on the Shelley Booth programme. And, by the way, do you often say this? So, you oh, look magnificent. What are you doing? You go, I'm doing Shelley Booth. That's interesting. I never felt a thing. Glucose, amino acids, salts, vitamins and minerals. So, if you're sharing a house with somebody who is oh, a carboholic, likes to drink a lot, and you've been partial to that as well, but you've come on the Shelley Booth programme, you're getting so much information 
anticipated anticipated <laughs> anticipated um, uh, triggers. So you're smelling food, the smell of baked bread, the look of sweeties, the look of chocolate, the look of crisps. If that's a trigger for you, that's not going to help you, is it? So it's going to be difficult. It's doable, but it's going to be difficult. It produces the anticipation, produces what's called dopamine. And that pleasure hormone of, hmm, I'm liking the thought of that bar of chocolate here. And you get all woozy and you're like, yes, going in for it. You eat it, then you get a surge of serotonin. So that happy hormone, you're like, that was brilliant, loved it. An hour later, is that it? It's just short lived. Just stays here for a bit. Flat. Anyway, I'm coming off the, the path here. Um, so, really quickly, I'm going to cover this much more in another session. But your pancreas, when you eat foods that have carbohydrate in them, it's called the glycemic index, actually. Glycemic index and glycemic load. But let's think about the glycemic index. Whenever you eat a bowl of rice, for example, very high in carbohydrates, it's going to spike your blood sugar. She's just told you that. Many, did she say 20 sugar cubes, 21 sugar cubes in that little bowl of rice? Equivalent sugar. Um, so your pancreas, what that has to do is produce insulin to lower the blood sugar level. And so your body can regain normal functions. Too high sugar level is not good for you. So the pancreas produces insulin in response to when you eat glucose, sugar, carbohydrates. And what it does is it kind of opens up the cell, so to speak, and lets the food get in. Your cells and muscles use it. And there's a feedback signal back to the pancreas to say, switch off. And everybody's happy. However, if you're a carboholic, a sugar addict, you drink loads of fizzy juice, you drink a lot of fresh orange juice, apple juice, alcohol, high fructose corn syrup, whoa, your pancreas is absolutely knackered, screaming for Shelley Booth to come into its life. It's over producing insulin and what happens is you get insulin resistance and that stops the, the insulin taking blood sugar down. So it's it's, um, it's dangerous. The feedback signal back to the pancreas is broken and so you get insulin resistance which means you can't really absorb vitamins and minerals, you can't use the food. So one, it sits on your belly and two, you get vitamin and mineral deficiencies even though you're eating the food but you can't absorb it, you see. So you start craving, you start craving chocolate it's your body's way of saying, I need magnesium. There's magnesium in chocolate, but don't go near it. Um, or like, oh, see when I was pregnant, I was craving like, mm, dip, like um, like dust. I was, I was um, deficient in iron. So your body, your hypothalamus is telling you that you're craving these things, trace minerals, because you're not getting them. So you start craving foods. So what you actually do need is potassium. You need sodium, you need magnesium, but you need potassium in bucket loads. Now, you need about 4,700 milligrams of potassium. So see when you say to me, the foods aren't filling me. Well, the foods should be filling you because you're eating a lot. It's a calorific meal. You don't know, we're not counting calories, but trust me, these meals are calorific. So they will satiate you, they will keep you going for longer. However, this hypothalamus is so used to you overfeeding and being gluttonous and eating five and six times a day. You don't need to be eating five and six times a day. Three times a day is more than ample, as long as the food that you're getting is nutrient-dense and it's appetising and filling. So, insulin. Benefits of reducing insulin, just really quickly here. You will reduce the incidence of heart disease, diabetes type 2, fatty liver, High blood pressure, high cholesterol, you will improve, mar a marked improvement in your cholesterol lipid profile. Now that's really important and I'm going to go into that a bit later. Reduce the incidence of stroke and placking to the brain and amyloid placking and uh, dementia and heart attacks. Loads of things. Insulin, too high insulin, 
is really, really bad and it's sugar and refined carbohydrates that's doing the damage. It's not good fats. So, if you are experiencing a withdrawal, I would put my money on it, a couple of pounds, that potassium is the problem. You are potassium deficient for two reasons. You've got insulin resistance. It's going to take you a while to work your way out of insulin resistance. You need to follow the plan. When people say, I'm sort of doing Shelley Booth's plan, you can't, you can't sort of do me. You have to do me, do me. It's like going out, out. You're in business. You're in business on this plan. You're doing Shelley Booth and whether I feel it or not, that's what you're doing. Potassium, just some of the main ones here, um, decreased blood pressure. Here's the thing, when you do this, see if you are on high blood pressure medication, you're on uh, blood pressure medication to bring your, uh, your blood pressure down. When you lose the bad carbohydrates, told you, it takes with it water and electrolytes. So that pushes blood, uh, blood pressure down instantly like over the next couple of days you'll feel that you might feel a wee bit woozy you speak to your doctor you tell your doctor you have reduced your bad carbohydrates that you were you had as part of your life your blood uh, uh, your doctor might take your blood pressure and think right okay let's just have a wee chat here okay so if that's one of the reasons that you have a woozy head then speak to your doctor or if it's one of the reasons which it probably will be if you're on blood pressure medication. See, like you, my brain goes at 100 miles an hour sometimes. And my mouth can't catch up with my brain sometimes. Uh, makes cell energy, so gives you energy when you are uh, potassium deficient. You feel lifeless or lethargic. You need to go to bed. Uh, it's a potassium pump, which we'll get into later on. So sodium potassium pump. And it's basically a balance of, we'll say, electricity between inside the cell and outside the cell. Um, helps normal heart rhythm, supports the pacemaker. So um, we'll come on to that another time. Um, and works with uh, sodium, so balances fluid in the body. If you don't have enough, then you're going to feel crap. Where do you get that from? Where do you get potassium from? Green leafy vegetables, that's why they're in the plan so much. And that's why I'm saying to you, you can have green leafy vegetables with every meal if you want. One, that'll fill you. The fibre in it is amazing for you. But the potassium is brilliant. What is one of the best things that you can do ever in life? Is this. Use your own fat as fuel. Right now, if you have been a sugar burner, eating all the stuff that we're coming away from, you will never tap into your own body fat as fuel. You will tap into muscle stores, which is the biggest problem in what I see in this industry. People losing muscle, losing weight because they're on a calorie restrictive diet, diet, and they've still got that fat though. So lost weight, got smaller, but still got the, the wobbly fat bits. And that might well be you. And I'm probably suggesting it is you because you found me. So I'm going to help you change all of this. But here's what you need to do. You need to be all in. You can't do the meal plan a wee bit and a wee bit of your own stuff. You can't. You can't substitute foods because you need my structure. You need me to tell you what to eat right now. In time, you could change things. See, right now, you need to be razor focused and on it. You can't do Shelley Booth half-heartedly. That would never be good enough. Uh, what's this one? I can't even drag it down. This is not letting me. Um, hold on a wee second, please. Ah, oh, bugger. It's not letting me drag that one down. Can you believe it? Little menace. Um, is it this one? I think it's this one. Yes. So, I want you to stop thinking about losing weight. I need you to stop thinking about losing weight. And if you are a bugger 
it's on the scales and off the scales, on the scales and off the scales, that has to stop because that tells me a lot already about you. There's problems here and I need to help you fix these problems. So the first step is to stop going on the scales. You've got the scales on a Monday. If weight loss is a goal for you, then it's scales only on a Monday. Not two days into it, not three days, nothing. Monday only. Because it gets into your head, becomes an obsession, and it's all about the weight. We're getting you healthy. You might lose weight at a slower speed than most people because your metabolism is, dare I say it, fucked. That's true. And I stopped swearing last week. You've ran yourself into the ground. So you might need to concentrate on just getting healthy, reversing insulin resistance, fixing everything, inflammation, internal inflammation. Your skin alone isn't happy. Never mind your poor wee cells in there. They're really inflamed. They're greeting. They're needing your help. So I want you to concentrate on increasing your energy, reducing your hunger by eating my meal plans and eat until you're full. Don't eat my stuff and then go to the biscuit tin. Doesn't work. In time, you will stop craving. I promise you, you'll stop, but you have to stick to the plan. You will decrease your carb cravings because you're eating potassium, you're eating good fats, moderate protein, low bad carbohydrates, high good carbohydrates, and your belly fat will uh, shrink for sure. When your belly fat starts to shrink, you know that fat is getting pulled from your liver. Now, See in the first couple of weeks. Sometimes, even in week three, your weight loss on the scales comes to a halt, but you see a difference in your pictures. That tells me you're still losing weight from inside your liver. You can see that in your pictures, but the scales have stayed the same. Don't worry about it. That happens. It happens to everybody, right? So you can't expect to lose every single week. You might but you can't expect to, right? You are getting healthy to lose weight as a byproduct. That we're not even thinking about the weight loss, that just happens. Um, I've not even referred to my notes, sorry. MSG, MSG is found in all the crap foods that you have been buying. All the jars, the takeaways, the Chinese, the Indian, MSG will, it's, it, it produces an artificial stimuli and drives hunger, makes food taste tastier, it's really, really bad for you. You're going to have a withdrawal coming away from MSG even. It's bad, it's toxic. The good thing is, you're coming away from it, you're going to rid yourself of it very soon. Here's another thing. If you don't have a gallbladder, <clears throat> or if you're not producing enough bile, you will not be able, um, bile, not not bile. Bile. Let's say it together. Bile. Not bile. If you're not producing enough bile, uh, you won't be able to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, even K. You won't be able to absorb them. So it will show up as a vitamin deficiency, even though you're eating them. So purified bile salts Please research it. If you don't have a gallbladder um, or you have uh, bile issues or gallbladder issues, liver issues, purified bile salts, salts is a great one to um, research. Please do. Cod liver oil as well would be a great source for you if there is a bile problem. Uh, so, I'm dotting about here everybody. I did make notes, believe it or not. Um, right, insulin resistance. Why are you craving insulin resistance? So there's a big, can we say fat? Yes, we can. There's a big fat juicy tick. We are working our way out of insulin resistance. It might take three weeks, three months, three years. Who knows? Depends on you as a person. People say to me, not very often right enough, but plateaued. Not believing it. Who told me that this works? Eight pound the first week. This is this is what people do, isn't it? Arms folded, no eye contact though. Uh, eight pound the first week. Six pound the second week. Two pound the third week. Nothing in the fourth week. Nothing in the fifth week. 
pound in the sixth week. You've got insulin resistance. However, I can't follow you around 24-7. I don't know if you're sticking to that plan. I don't know if you're moving. I don't know if you're doing 10,000 steps a day. I don't know if you're getting enough sleep. I'm not with you. I would like to be sometimes. Um, I don't know if you're listening to the mindset stuff. I don't even know if you're listening to this live because there's 145 of you listening and there's another, let's do the maths, 650 of you absent. I don't know if you'll even listen to this, will you? So, what am I saying to you? I don't even know what I'm saying to you. Empty calories, you can't eat all that food now. It's empty calories, there's nothing in that food. Pasta, cereals, cakes, biscuits, waffles, rice, that stuff, there's nothing in it. It's just bulking agents to make you feel like you're eating. Um, carbs are too high if you are still craving. We might need to look at what you're actually eating in terms of vegetables, but see right now, that's not even an issue. That's not even an issue. You just need to concentrate on the meal plan. Too many triggers. Visually, you're hearing the sweetie packers, packets rattling in his pocket because he's pocket munching. He's trying not to eat them in front of you, but the bugger is eating them. They're in his house coat pocket. How dare you do that to me? You smell the pizza in the oven. And it's not our pizza, it's his pizza. The Domino's has just been delivered. Too many triggers. Food enhancers like MSG. If you're still eating that crap, you're going to still be hooked on that crap. And it's going to cause cravings. Addictions, you decide what it is you've got. Soy protein isolates. Now, I don't want you to eat soy. If I had my way, you would never eat soy again. What about the vegetarians, you're asking me? Well, I'm saying the same thing to you as vegetarians. Please don't eat soy. Why? Well, that's a whole session all by itself. And I will get to that, but not tonight. I would love you to eat organic. I would love you to eat wild caught fish. Now, some of these, well, quite a few people have been telling me about the fish documentary on Netflix. No one could watch it, but I'm going to have to try and watch it. Uh, fish conspiracies or something. Fish spirits, no? Something like that. I'd love you to eat GMO free. I'd love you to eat free, not free range, grass fed eggs. Free range means nothing, by the way. Free range, that poor wee chicken has been in the cage and it's probably done that. Look. Cage is shut. That's not grass fed. Pasture raised. The chickens are out in the wild, um, well, you know what I mean, out in the grass, eating the grass. They're not fed pellets of soy and corn and GMO stuff that I'm telling you to stay away from. I'm going to cover all that in a much, um, well, much more detailed life a bit later on. I appreciate I'm bombarding you with information here, but I'm trying to get you to a point where you think, right, okay, these withdrawals, I need to get through them. Because I've seen quite a bit on about withdrawals. so. Look at me straight in the eyes. You're going to be fine. You are going to be absolutely fine. In fact, you're going to be better than fine. You are on fire and you're going to be on fire. You're going to be on flames. In flames. Did I tell you that MSG triggers insulin 300% more than if you didn't have MSG? MSG. All that crap that's found in all the takeaways that you're eating. Everything. Practically. Really, really scary. Scary, scary stuff. But the good thing is, you're about to get healthy. You're about to come on the most amazing journey with me. And we are going to go deep. Can I just say, girls, our feel it be girls, you have been incredible. In fact, I'm going to give you a virtual cuddle. Come in. Come in right here. Every single one of you, get in. I can just see wee heads here. I'm squeezing you really, really tight. And saying thank you so much for supporting all of our new girls. It's amazing to see. We've really created the most amazing community for you to come on here and feel accepted, feel safe, feel supported. And that's what we do here. There's no nonsense. We're not even going to talk about the nonsense because there's none of it here. We're just out to get better, to be better human beings, 
to live better lives and to get healthy. Brilliant. And have a laugh as we go. Isn't that amazing? So high fives, everybody. I appreciate I gave you a lot of information there, but it's important. A lot of the stuff we'll cover um, in more detail. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, it's great to be working with you. I can't wait to see the changes in you. Your belly shape, your belly fat is going to go. Your fat cells don't go away, they just shrink. You get rid of the fat. Your liver, liver will start to clean up. Your brain will start to be really, really fast functioning, a really efficient functioner. Your thyroid issues might clear up from off the medication. You never ever take yourself off medication, by the way. Your doctor will do that for you. That's a disclaimer here. I am not diagnosing you with anything. I'm giving you information to be curious about and to go away and do your own research. But this changes your life. I'm going to sit in that. People say to me, you hear such amazing things. How do you feel about this? I feel fucking amazing. That's how I feel. I see you changing your life. And I feel absolutely amazing that I can sit alongside you, albeit virtually, and go, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Have a brilliant night, everybody. Take it easy.